been on Wall Street. Okay, hi guys. So today we're going to be showing you how to trade like a sniper. Okay, and what this means is that I find a lot of people are trading like a machine gun. They're machine gun traders. They're just getting into trades, getting into trades, getting into trades. Not fully understanding that trading is about accuracy. You need to trade like a sniper. Every single entry point and exit point has to be meticulously made. And that is what we're going to go into today. Secondly, also, there is a big discrepancy that I find or inconsistency that I find between trend trading between the one hour and the daily. We've, we know that over here, for instance, I'm going to show you that I've divided the section into two parts, parts one and parts two, which will be trading respectively. Now, part one, you can see that the trend is down, okay? And many people say, okay, look at the daily, the trend is down, I'll either look to get in on the four hourly or the hourly. I personally don't trade the hourly if the trend is down and the four hours down. If the trend is, if the daily trend is down, I'm looking to enter in on the four hourly as long as the four hourly is also making lower lows and lower highs. If for any reason the four the trade the daily trend is down, but the four hourly now starts making higher highs, I'm looking then to use the four hour as my trend and get in on the hourly. And this I'll explain to you now because there is a very, very big um, inconsistency between the time frames because if you think of it the daily has 24 hours in so 4 goes into 24 let's say 6 times okay so it's it's a 6 times frame when the hourly you're training off the hourly for the daily trend it's a 24 hour multiplier which is too long a lot can happen in the hourly in terms of one day in one day so I'm looking to keep the time frames short and looking at the relationship between them, between the different time frames. So I find if the daily trend is down and the four hourly trend is down, I'm looking to get on the four hourly. If the four hourly is now going up in contrast to the daily, I'm using and using the four hourly as my trend going up and then getting in on the hourly, even though it's in sharp contrast to the daily. And this is what we'll go through today. And as things pop up, I'll make things more available um, in terms of spotting the trades. Certainly, what you will see by my analysis is that I'm very, very meticulous in where I get in, how I get in. Always 10 pips below um, the resistance line, I should get in with 30 pips stop loss. I like having a large stop loss of 30 pips, and you will see why. Okay, I'm also a big um, believer in the Fibonacci trading, but these are all things that we take into account now. So, as you can see, we're going to deal, first of all, in section one. Okay, So, we've got our daily trend is coming down. Now we're going to look into the 4-hour, and we're going to look at it. So what I've done is, this is section 1, as you can see here. Section 1 on the daily, section 1 on the 4-hourly. We know now that, look, the 4-hour is making lower lows. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm looking to get into the 4-hourly, because the 4-hour is making lower lows in the downtrend, and so is the daily. I'm not looking at the hourly at all here. Now what I've done here mostly is I've mostly traded breakouts. Okay. So you will see meticulously how to trade a breakout is that I always put my um, pending orders. I always trade breakouts with pendings. About 30 or 40 pips in, I put my pending. And my stop loss is either, if I, don't, if I can't see a, a, re, a, a, a recent high, I'll either put it 30 pips above here as well, like about there. Or if I can see a recent high, I'll put the stop loss directly above that. And for breakouts, I'll always trade a 1 is to 1 ratio, profit ratio. So 1 is to 1. I've color coded it. So red is stop loss, green is get in, blue is take profit. And I've also numbered them accordingly so you can see that how the trades come together. So let's start over here. Price came through. I had a pending order here. I had my stop loss here. Broke through, hit my pending order. Came down, hit my take profit. Okay. Then I'm looking to get out of break again. I do the same thing. 30 pips here. I put my stop loss above the most recent high. And there about is my take profit. Price comes down. Boom, I've taken profit around there. I'm looking to do it on the, on the, uh, on the third trade here as well. 
here you can see is one, two, three, four, five, six candles. Okay, seven. You guys also have to realize is that the zigzag lines often give false signals. And I'm a very firm believer in the seven candle high and low. Okay, but this we'll get into later. I'll take this trade in again. So here we go. Stop loss over there. Um, take profit over there. I know the stop loss is quite far away, but that's the most recent high. Alternatively, I could have just placed it 30 pips above here, which would have been around there, which is about the same as my pending order. But I chose to be cautious, took it there. Now, this is where the, the very patience came in if you looked at the first video that I made on the psychology of trading. And these two videos that I made will really tie in trading together for you. Okay, you, you, you get in over here and now you're waiting. Okay, look, you'll take profits over here because it's a one-to-one -one ratio and your money comes all the way down here. Even over here, guys get too impatient and they get out. Nowhere near they take profit. But you guys have to understand how the market works. It came here. It didn't hit our take profit. It retraced all the way back up. Hence why our stop loss is so far away and it shot down again. Boom. We only landed. This trade only closed around here already. Okay, so now we start getting over here and we take and I get in again. So what I do is I'm waiting for it's shot this profit here shot down straight down. Now I didn't look at it at the market when I made this. I didn't look at it as like dream trades. Like I would have I would have known to take in this. I would have not known whether to take this fourth trade over here because I mean this market just shot down. I mean I only took profit over here just below this resistance line. So what I would have waited for is obviously. I would have either put a pending order over here again, right? But then there's no strong, clear resistance level here, so I wouldn't. So I would rather do the breakout. And here you can see there was a loss on this trade. I put my star, my take prof, I mean my pending order, 30 pips above, my stop loss over here, there's my target. This trade I lost. This obviously due to a sharp spike. Obviously this must have been news, came all the way up. Now, if you think of it, how I would have traded this one, though, and I would have definitely lost as well, is that very strong resistance. I would have already had a pending order around here. And when I do pending orders for this, for retracements, it's very different. I always take a 2 to 1 ratio. Um, but for retracements, I look at the most resist important resistance level. I put my pending order about 10 pips in, okay? And then my take profit still 30 pips above. Now, over here... I got in, but then it hit my stop loss already. So this trade I lost. Number five I lost, definitely. Price came all the way back down. So now we've suddenly had the big spike, okay? Even over here, if I had drawn a, a, a Fibonacci over here, I also like to place pending orders on Fibonacci's. I would have placed a pending order 10 pips over here and then 30 pips above there. Okay, it just missed, it just didn't activate the pending order for the Fibonacci. And it came back down over here. Would have been good profit, but what can you do? You will never know. Now we're looking. Now, as you can see, pri price is still coming down because here we've we've we haven't made a higher high than the four on this previous high. Okay, in terms of zigzags, and this isn't actually even a valid zigzag. Okay, it's only three candles, two candles in fact. So we can actually discount this one completely, um, in theory. Now, what we're doing is we're coming back up. So now we're trading in a range. So now price came all the way back up. I'm still using this resistance level over here. Okay, I don't count this simply because it's, it's not valid. So I'm counting this still. So I would have put my, again, a pending order over here, 10 pips in, 30 pips above. Price came back up, hit my pending order. Boom, I take profit. I do the same thing the whole time without fail. I have the mind and the psychology of a trader. I trade meticulously. That's why perfect. I'm a big um, fan of pending orders. So there's no human discrepancy involved. I'm, I'm always 10 pips pending order uh, below or above my support and resistance line, depending if I'm going long or short. And my, 30, and my stop loss is always 30 pips. And of course, retracements, I'm always trading as a 2 to 1 ratio. Over here, for breakouts, I'm always trading as 1 to 1 ratio. Here again, came back up. Num if you look at number seven, stop loss, pending, get in, take profit. Same here, number eight. I didn't know this resistance line was going to form. You couldn't have known, but you will still use this resistance line. So, boom, same thing. Pending order, 30 pips above, 10 pips below there. 
get in profit. Okay, I'm making profit here. Over here, what I could have done over here is when these things started creating these resistance levels down here, I would have been thinking to myself, okay, let me try and trade a breakout. So I did that. I put my, sorry guys, this isn't colored, but this would have been my pending. This over here would have been my stop loss. It triggered my pending order, but I lost. It came back down. Then it hit a very strong resistance line. But at the same time, I wouldn't have known how strong this resistance line is until the candle started started moving. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm not looking to make any more. I would have put a pending order somewhere down here. Okay, even though I lost this one, I know trend is still coming down. Look, still making lower lows. That didn't make a higher high than that. If this made a higher high than this, and I know the four hour is moving up again, um, then I'm not trading on the four hour, I'm trading in the hourly, but you will see that now. now. Over here again, I would have placed a pending order here. My next resistance line, 10 pips above, I mean 30 pips above, 10 pips below, hits it, take profit. Same thing over here. Hits it, take profit. So we've made a lot of profit here, getting in meticulously. Here we've lost, here we've lost. Okay. Now, as you can see, I already, if you remember, I was, although I lost on this one, this started making a very, very strong um resistance level or support level down here. So what I'm looking to now is still put a pending order over here, even though I was trading up here. I put a pending order over here, 10, uh, 30 pips in, 30 pips above, get in, boom, take profit. Simple as that. That's a one is to one ratio. Now, over here, I would have done the same thing. Pop back up. I would have had my already my pending order over here to trade to, to trade a retracement these trades didn't work out you can see here so I would have gotten over here that's my stop loss it broke straight through here hit my stop loss same for trade number 13 and it came all the way up here okay over here I would have looked to get in again but I would have definitely lost I would have looked to place my pending order over here my stop loss over here my take profit but boom I would have lost that trade but the most interesting Thing to discover right here is the simple fact that this uh, this zigzag line here this has made now a higher high on the four hour than all of these high, uh, highs over here here we made lowing highs lower lows came up down lower high so we're still in a downtrend all of a sudden boom we've got a perfect and proper higher high which is above all the other zigzags over here so now, what we are understanding now is that the 4-hour is now trading in sharp contrast to the daily. Remember, the daily was still down. Now we've hit this part here. So the daily is down. The 4-hour is making lower lows in congruency with the daily. But now, all of a sudden, we made a higher high. Now, I don't look to start trading with still trading 4-hourly and looking for reversals here. I'm now a proper trend trader. So now I've got a higher high. Now... I let go of the daily. The daily is not my trend anymore. I look to the four hour. Four is, four hours making higher highs. I immediately switch to the hour to get in. So the four hour is now my new trend. And I look to the hourly. Okay, so now we're reaching section two. Here we go, section two. This area here. Just get there. This area is this area over here. So, four hourly is up. Now I'm looking to trade on the hourly. Over here, as you can see, I'm only looking to buy now. So, the first thing I looked at is to try and buy over here. So, I would have put my, my pending over here, my stop loss there, my take profit. This, profit. this trade didn't work out. I lost. Came all the way down here. Now, the important thing to remember over here is that I'm now making, this is made a lower low, but it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm looking for congruency in how to trade here. If I look at this, I extended that line all the way from these resistance levels over here on the one hour, which is very, very strong. Okay, so I look, I look to get in here, but the main thing is that as soon as this candle started forming here, the resistance level may have not formed, but definitely the supply and demand line would have formed. So I'm always looking for three reasons. That's it. Three reasons. If I don't have three reasons, I'm not getting into a trade. Okay. So I already had my resistance level here. 
and obviously the price came all the way down here. But I wouldn't have not gotten into this trade without this supply and demand area because I would only had two reasons. I would have only had trend and a, a resistance line. My C is not valid here because the hourly is made a lower low. So it's a sharp contrast um, to the four hourly. So I'm not making, it's not A, B, C. It's now A, B. Okay, so there's no C formed here. So I would need a supply and demand zone in order for me to get in here which evidently happened. I had my resistance level here, although it formed here. This is my resistance level here. And then the supply and demand zone formed. So I would have gotten in. 10 pips above, a pending order 10 pips above, resist a stop loss 30 pips below, I'm in. I am have patience. Two is to one ratio and I'm patient and I'm patient and I'm patient. I didn't take profit here. I didn't take profit there. I waited all the way for profit to get into my take profit and I took it. I would have had a pen, another pending order over here obviously in case price retraced but it didn't so price came down but I also had a pending order over here simply because now I've got a very good uh, resistance, uh, resistance line over here 30 pips in I put my stop loss over here on the most recent high and I take a 2 is to 1 ratio so this, this trade over here would have worked out. So not all of them are numbered, so just bear with me. Uh, three pips, if I put this over here. Yeah, I would have still won if I left this, this trade pending. But let's let's just analyze this one here quickly, okay? Even though it's, it's not entirely numbered. Uh, I get in over here. Must take profits only all the way down over here. Okay, look what happens. Price hits there. I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking. Price comes all the way back down. I'm hitting negative. I'm not panicking. In fact, this is even an entry zone when I get in again. Okay, on number two. Sorry, this is not numbered. So number two here, very strong resistance line. I can see that happening, forming over here. I've got a pending order here. Everything's the same. I get back in. So now I'm actually in two trades. But look, number two already triggers. That's done. I've taken profit. Okay. Price comes back down. I'm already looking to enter into a, a breakout, which evidently happens. I'm already getting 30 pips in, 30 pips above the most resistance level. I get in, my number three trade hits, but at the same time, if you remember this trade here, already took profit at around this blue level as well. So literally, I'm just getting in at every single point that's possible, but it's perfect trades. It's sniped trades. It's at the right point, right entry, and you can't go wrong. Okay, bearing in mind we're still trading in the direction of the four hourly trend, even though it's in sharp contrast to the daily. Why? It's because if I'm starting to tr use trade with the one hourly on the daily time frame, there's too many candles involved, and you won't get the right signal. So you want to just keep the time frames multiplier at a minimum. Okay, so the four hours going up, I'm trading in the direction of the four hour using the one hour. Okay, and we'll look how we'll switch over later. So now number three. So now over here, one, two, three, four, five. This is not a valid zigzag line. It's even six candles, not seven. So I don't really count it. Okay. So I'm getting in again, but what I did do is I got in on the breakout anyway at this number four. Stop loss over here, pending over there. It hits, look what happens, price hits there, comes down, comes down, boom, sharp candle. But I don't freak out, I don't um, get fear get a hold of me, I just trade my plan. Even if it came all the way down here, I'm happy taking the loss because I've calculated. One to one ratio, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, price, boom, I hit. Now, I say here look at the four hour because this is a very, very high, um, very, very high point here. And if I look at the four hour, this is where we are now. Okay. There's a resistance level that formed, but I wouldn't have known that that resistance level would have formed until it made more candles. Okay. So I'm still looking. The four hour is still in an uptrend. Okay. It hasn't made suddenly a low, a low. So I'm still looking to trade it on the one hourly. And I do the same thing. So. Over here, price comes down. 
the very significant fact of here is that I did put a Fibonacci level and this was a 61.8, okay, around here. So what I would have done is I would have already put a pending order here. I'd have used this Fibonacci. I would have put a pending order 10, 10 pips up and then 30 pips below. And then this is the area that I would have gone in. Okay guys, so over here, I say look at the 4 hourly because it's a very significant point of, of turning, but it doesn't matter. I'm still in an uptrend in a 4 hourly. There's no other resistance zone around you except for that, but I'm not looking to look at a reversal on the 4 hourly for the daily trend because the trend daily trend is still coming down. So we're in this section here, it's still classified as down until it makes a higher high over here, All right? So even if this was at a heavy resistance zone. I'm still look, treating four hours going up and I'm still getting in on the hourly, okay? So over here, price came back down here, okay? The reason why, I, I, I put a pending order over here on the on the hourly because I drew a Fibonacci from this point here, this zigzag point here, right up until that point there, okay? Now what has happened is I am up for Fibonacci trading. I always put my pending 10 pips in, right? And 30 pips out for stop loss. Came in and hit it. That's my take profit over there. It came all the way up, didn't hit my take profit, came back down. Now I would have had still had another pending, but here I would have put the pending order on this resistance line, the support line that has formed, okay? But obviously I'm taking the 10 pips from the resistance line now, so 10 pips in, pending to get in, stop loss over there, and take profit over there. I lost both of these trades. But it's fine. I'm happy with it. I would have had no reason to get in in any way in any one of these trades of year. Resistance wasn't strong enough. And looking back, there was no clear strong resistance. This year is where things get interesting. This year is a very, if I look at the started line. Over here, down here, I've got a Fibonacci that I've drawn from this area here all the way to there. Um, that's this area here, the 61.8. This area here is this area here. So I was looking forward to getting in over here somewhere. But in hindsight, I I didn't, just because I like I like to be more sure of my trade. So you could have put a pending order here because this would have been the 61.8 on the 4 hourly, but I never. I waited. Okay, so what happens, price hit here. I'm using this resistance line here because it's very, very strong. Price came down here. Would I have gotten in here? Would any trades have been actioned over here? 10 pips? Yes, trades would have been actioned. In fact, I would have most likely, most likely have 30 pips down. This would have been a valid trade. I would have gotten over here. Price came down, came up, came all the way back down. I would have gotten in again. Here's my resistance line. Wouldn't have taken my 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 uh, stop loss. I'm in both trades right now. If I've taken this trade and this trade, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I take profit over there. Boom. Now what's happened is also I've got a very very nice resistance line and I've got so, uh, support and resistance. I mean uh, a uh, resistance line and I've got a very very nice supply and demand. So if I go back to this trade over here and this trade over here. If I just looked at it on the hourly, quite frankly, I would have taken this trade, right? But I would have not have taken this trade. And I'll tell you why. Although, if I looked at it from a 61.8 ratio on the 4 hourly, I could have put a pending order over here and it would have been a very good trade, okay? For the hourly. But if I just analyze it on the hourly, I'm just doing this to show you guys how meticulously you have to analyze your trades. I didn't have three reasons to get in here if I took the four hour out of it. I only had trend, which is going up on the four hourly, and a resistance line over here. Nothing else. So I wouldn't have taken this. But I would have taken this trade because the price came down. This classified as a double bottom. So I would have gotten in here rather and I've taken profit over there. Okay. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking to get in back on... Breakouts. Four hours still going out. I'm getting in on the hourly. I put a breakout 
about over around here, 30 pips. There is my stop loss. I'm getting it over there somewhere. That's my take profit. I get in, it comes back down, stops me out. Okay, that's fine. But now I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for a better signal to get in. Better signal, better signal. Price came, comes back down here. I do take this trade simply because I drew my Fibonacci from here all the way to that zigzag over there. More importantly, I discount this zigzag. Why? It's only one, two, three candles. It doesn't count. So I leave out the signal, zigzag line. I take it over here. Price comes, comes back down here. A very, very good zone. I would have not known that this support and resistance um, zone uh, line would have formed, but I did have supply and demand, and I had a Fibonacci in the supply and demand. I do the same thing. Put my getting it over here with a 10 pip stop loss. I mean 10 pip pending, and then I uh, I would have put my Oh, there it is over here, anywhere. Over here. Stop loss over there. I get in. 2 to 1 ratio. 1, 2. I'm in. Now what happens? I take my take profit. Comes back down. But now this is a very, very strong support and resistance line that has formed over here. So I'm looking to get in on a breakout. Pending over here. 30 pips back. This is too far to put my, um, my stop loss over here. So I put my stop loss 30 pips here. Price comes down. Shoots pass, hits my pending order, stop loss over here, take profit over here, one is to one ratio. Done deal. I'm not trading anywhere in here simply because I don't have three reasons. Price has come down, it hasn't reached my 61.8. I've only got two reasons to get in your trend and a supply and demand zone. I don't I have a zigzag here, but I don't even try I use candle when a, a candle information I only use as confirmation on um, support and resistance lines, but mostly I'm, I've got pending orders in already. So this for me, I wouldn't have taken any of these trades. Here I get in again. This is a very strong resistance line formed over here. Uh, the stop loss is too far, so I put my stop loss 30 pips above over here. I put my pending over here. I put my take profit over here. It just takes my take profit, boom. But now this is the interesting part, guys. The daily has made a higher high, so I switched the 4 hour as the 4 hour is now trading with daily. Look here. So this area over here is this area over here. We were making lower lows on the daily, and now all of a sudden over here, we've passed that higher high. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, now daily has made a higher high, so daily is trading in direction, daily is going up. Now I don't trade in the hourly anymore because daily is going up. My 4 hour is going up with the daily, so I switch to the daily. To get into my trades. So now I start trading the 4 hour early again. It hits that resistance level. So this area over here on the 4 hourly is this area over here on, on the 1 hourly. But I'm not trading on the 1 hourly anymore because the daily has made a higher high. 4 hourly is going up. It's going in the direction of now trend, the, the main daily trend. So I discount hourly and I get into the 4 hourly. Again, I start trading again. Normal rules. Trading the breakouts, uh, 30 pips pending, 30 pips above, or this could have alternatively been above this um, high here, but it's over here. One is to one ratio, get in, patience, patience, boom, it'll take my profit over here. And that basically, guys, is how you trade meticulously. Price came all the way back down on the four hourly. It's not making lower lows than anything else. So the beautiful thing about here is I'm using this very strong resistance line here and this very strong resistance line over here as like a get in zone. I put my pending order over here. Could have been on Wall Street.